Which bodes the question, if a project pan falls in a forest and no one hears it, did it make a sound? Also bodes the question, did that joke make any sense? Hey y'all, welcome to Clove Room. Today I'm gonna to be discussing the project pan I did last year, how it ultimately ended early because I never posted about it again after May when it was supposed to be a year long project, but also sort of reckoning what success means in modern day beauty projects. That sounds like a master's project thesis or something like that. But really just discussing what success looks like to different folks, what the purpose of project panning really is, all of that sort of overthinking, overwrought analysis <laughs> that I really love to bring to beauty YouTube. I'm also going to be discussing my usage goals for this year because I am sort of doing a project pan this year. I'm also, it's not, I guess, traditional, but it is sort of traditional. I'll explain it later. And if you are new here, my name is Cam. I'm a non-binary trans -dim creator. I love to talk about beauty, but I love to do that through the lenses of conscious consumerism, gender identity, and sometimes I love to bring in pop culture too. I have a lot of uh, fun videos coming this month, this year. I feel like I'm in a really exciting point in my YouTube channel where I am growing and I'm kind of learning as I go how to build the plane. If I even want this to be a plane, maybe I want it to be a boat, who knows? I'd love it if you give it a like, it helps me a lot in the wild, wild west of the YouTube algorithm. And go ahead and subscribe for future uploads. Yeah. And comment below if you're project painting this year. I'd love to hear what sort of usage projects y'all are doing. If y'all have let go of usage project, Pro okay, this entire video, projects, products, every time I film anything about a project pan, it's like, I mean to say product, I say project, or vice versa. Or I actually say the right word, but then I question myself. So we'll see. But let's just go ahead and get into it. So last year, I attempted a very traditional project pan, a rolling project pan, where I think I started with 10 products, and with every product, I was going to roll in a new product once I reached... A usage goal set and my plan was to do monthly check-ins. I did a project pan launch, I did a check-in video shortly thereafter, and then I didn't do another check-in video until May. And that was my last check-in video. And there were reasons for this, of course, there's reasons for everything, but I am sort of, or not sort of, I am insecure about not finishing things. I am I mean, there's still stuff from grad school I haven't really finished. I mean, I have my degree, but I, I, I have, uh, I get in my own way a lot when it comes to things that require maintenance, when it comes to hitting uh, deadlines. It, it's just something I struggle with. So I have felt very guilty about dropping the project. And of course, much like Stonewall, no one died. Like, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm sure millions of project pans are left unchecked upon every year. And a large part of that project, of course, was me checking, was supposed to be me checking in every month with my audience, showing the product products. Gosh, Lord be with me. Showing the products that I had used, where I was, if I had panned them, if the pan had gotten larger. And this was very early on, and I'm still very early on, I think, in my YouTube career. But what I quickly found <laughs> is that I find that content, filming it, pretty boring and monotonous. And it felt like I was, it, it felt like there wasn't much for me to say. And I really like commentary. I really like talking. I really like giving my opinion. I really like an analyzing things. Like I prefer doing a meta project pan philosophical reflection video than doing just a check-in where I'm like, last month it was here. This month it's here. I'm excited it's at here, but I'd love for it to be. And I am not saying that making project pan content makes you <laughs> a robot or anything like that. Of course, I think there's people who do it very interestingly and I like watching a lot of people's project pan. For me personally to make though, it was very unfulfilling. I found that about a lot of traditional beauty content. And you know, there are there is some traditional beauty content I love making. I really like doing anti-hauls. That's a bread and butter beauty YouTube video. But there's others like reviews or project pan updates where I just don't think my talents in that arena. And whenever I would, and I was also pretty inconsistent at YouTube last year until September, October is when I really got running. And I thought about doing a project pan update. I just 
didn't want to. Like, I wasn't excited about it. And at this point, I only do videos that excite me. And I hope I always do that. But there's no other motivation except my enjoyment of this channel so far. You know, I don't have, like, I'm not making any money. I'm hopefully building to where one day I'll make a moderate sum. That would be nice. But there was no real incentive except just enjoying the work to make vi videos last year and up till now. And I just had no interest in coming on here and being, there's a pan, here's a pan, everywhere a pan pan. Old MacDonald had a pan, yeah, yeah, yo. You know, it just wasn't what I was interested in. And so I feel, so I was reflecting on it and I was like, I really just totally botched that project pan. But then I thought, actually, did I? In the updates I had offered, I had used up at least two, three, four products completely. So I, I, I believe so, at least two to four. And that's a success in the short time I was project panning and updating y'all. I had used up products and I had made pretty significant gains. I had hit pan on this Glossier stretch concealer that I've been working through forever. There were successes in that. But then after I stopped checking in in May, I, I was curious. So yesterday I went back and watched my last check-in video, which I don't love the look in. I kind of look like a mess, but it's fine. It's fine. If you aren't aware, I just completed a four month no buy at the end of the year. So from September to December, I did not bring in any new makeup except for like brow and mascara replacements, things like that. And in that time, I really gave myself a lot of time to use up a lot of makeup. And so I was curious. Um, I went back and watched my check-in and of the eight products that were still in my project pan at that time, I have completely, not just panned, I have used up six of them, which is three fourths. I used up 75%. Yes, I'm right. I used up 75% of those products, which is to me a huge success, which bodes the question, if a project pan falls in a forest and no one hears it, did it make a sound? Also bodes the question, did that joke make any sense? But I was like, damn, like that wasn't, this project wasn't a failure at all. It made me f laser focus on a lot of products. And, and I will say I'm posting an empty soon that's going to be all the makeup I used up during my no buy. And I think all of those products were part of that. So I will, so I don't wanna like give it away sort of, and I don't wanna have to like talk about the products like more than I will in the empties. But anyway, in all accounts of a project pan, it made me focus on my collection. It made me rethink how I bought makeup enough that I chose to do a no buy because I was like, wow, I have a lot of stuff. I keep buying stuff and this isn't sustainable. And I ended up using up 75% of the products that were still in the project along with the two or three I had used up earlier in the project that year. And of the two left, one, is actually going to be something I talk about, but one is this Hollywood Flawless Filter, which when I did that check in May was like up to here, like halfway, it's basically gone. I mean, there's still like, probably like a month or two left in it, but this is a huge product for the kind of product it is. Like you get an ounce of product and sometimes they use it as a skin tint, but a lot of times it's just as like a primer, mix in, highlighter. So I use the crap out of this. So. This is one of the only ones I have left. And then the other one was actually not a product I was trying to use up all the way. It was a product I was trying to hit pan on. I still have not hit pan, but I'm a lot closer. Like I looked at the footage I shot in May and the imprint is a lot more worked into. I feel like, I mean, this is gonna be a hard product to hit pan in because I don't really use a ton and I usually just use it to layer over things, yada, yada, yada. It seems like a pretty thick pan. But still, I, I didn't have any duds. Like I had, like of those eight products, I was like, well, six of them completely gone in my empties. Other two, one's really close to being done. The other one, I still have a little bit of ways to go in hitting my goal of hitting pan on it, but I'm much closer than I was. It, it, it made me rethink what was I wanting to get out of these beauty projects. Was I wanting to get content out of them? Was I wanting to get 12 videos out of my project pan? And would that have been a success? Or even though I didn't check in regularly and I never did a finale, I never pulled in more items after I used up the things I used up. To me, I still look back on my project pan and I'm like, actually that's a success. 
And for me personally, it was a huge success. For me as a content creator, perhaps not so much. And it also made me realize the project, traditional monthly check-in project pans is never going to be for me. I hardly want to do anything once a month, <laughs> especially something that I personally found making pretty dull. And this is something I've kind of known about myself for a while, but when something's purely data-based and is something that I can't kind of opine on <laughs> and I just have to track and it, it, it just doesn't interest me. There, There's a part, there's a genre of beauty projects that either don't work for me or I'm just realizing I have to customize for myself. And I think a project pan's one of them. You know, with my budget, I'm really pushing my limits as a person <laughs> with budgeting at all, which is something I'm trying to do more this year anyway in my general life. But I've been pretty good so far at entering in every item of makeup I bought, my budget, my makeup budget at least, my general budget is not, but my makeup budget is up to date. I know how much is left on my budget this month. I have entered and logged everything I've wanted to, and I'm excited to have data from buying makeup this year that I can reflect on for content and also just like for personal interest. But there are other projects I've seen. One that I would, I, I think is so cool and I would love to do it, but I know that I could not is when people make a big log of all of their makeup and every time they use it, they put like an X by it. Or even it, like some people just do that with eyeshadow palettes. Like I have a list of all my eyeshadow palettes. Every time I use it for a look, every time I reach for it, I put an X by it. Which seems simple, but I know for me, that would stress me out <laughs> to the moon and back. I could just not do that. And I think, and I don't think that means that I can't do usage product projects. <laughs> projects. I don't think that's what that means. I think what that means is that what, what other people may do and what you may even if you really enjoy following it and you really enjoy the content they are producing, how do you take that and make it so that you can succeed in it? And this is how I also think about no buys and low buys when people are like, I just, you know, I can't fathom doing a no buy because I know there are just some things that I treasure collecting, there are things I treasure buying and I get enjoyment out of this. And maybe it's one of the only aspects of my life I get that enjoyment out of. It's financially feasible for me. I don't wanna stop buying makeup. But yet they're like, but I know I buy too much. Success in these beauty project arenas doesn't mean you go, for lack of a better phrase, balls to the wall with it. That doesn't have to be it. You can be a conscious consumer and never do a no buy. I think that's important to say. You don't have to have a year of not buying things, four months of not buying things, six months of not buying things. You don't ever have to do a no buy to be a more conscious consumer. You don't even really have to do a low buy to be a more conscious consumer. You can have excess and surplus. You can have things that you know you may never go through, but that doesn't mean you can't have a healthy relationship with buying and consuming things. And that doesn't mean you can't make it work for you. Everyone's metric of success and what makes them happy and comfortable is different. And I think it's important that instead of living by others' successes and being like, well, look at what they do. Like, I would never be able to do, you know, I look at Hannah Louise Post and I would never be able to do a year no buy. Like, that seems, or maybe not never, but it seems pretty radical for me. It seems like it'd be pretty difficult to go that long without purchasing things. Now, I will say, I think... Also, a lot of the times with stuff like that, people are receiving PR during <laughs> these projects. People are receiving gifts from friends. I received gifts from friends during my no buy, several gifts from friends and family that certainly made it easier <laughs> and more fun. So just, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, and I hope this whole, I don't want to call it a rant, but I hope this whole discussion made sense is that there is nothing wrong, and I would say there's something great about realizing what you're comfortable with, realizing what you succeed at, and doing it that way. When someone has a goal, the thing I, if, you know, if it's a friend, family, whatever, the thing I always ask them is like, when you have done something like this in the past, what worked for you? Did cold turkey work for you? Did quitting gradually work for you? What worked for you? Because success truly means something different to everyone. And I think that's great. I think that's 
wonderful. And I think that's what makes us all valuable. And I think even as content creators, it'd be boring if we all were able to do the same thing, but different people need to do different projects. Different people need to have different structures that they can succeed at because of neurodiversity, because of lifestyle, because of budget constraints, because of a lot of things. You know, there's no awards at the end of the year. I, I didn't get an award at the end of my four month no buy of like, excellence and no buyery. There's not a lifetime achievement award on Hannah Louise Postman's desk or doing a year long no buy. The only successes that come from these projects are personal and internal and things that we can take and use to strengthen and get a better, more fulfilling relationship with consuming makeup. So now I want to move into talking about what I'm doing this year. I am doing a project pan this year. I am just not, again, I did not succeed at monthly updates and I don't want to do monthly updates. It's not exciting for me. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is I have, I have 12 different products that I have usage goals on. And I wanna share those usage goals with y'all on why I wanna use these products up or why I wanna hit pan on them, et cetera, et cetera. In June, I plan on coming back as of now. I will let y'all know if this changes, but in June, I plan on coming back and seeing how I'm doing with those goals, if there's anything I wanna roll out of the project or anything I wanna roll in. And then at the end of the year, I'll also do another sort of check-in. But that to me feels Kind of like what I did last year without the check-ins part, because I just, once I said, okay, these are the products I really want to focus on using up this year, I was off to the races. I was reaching for those products more. I got enjoyment out of it. I just don't love the documentation part of it. I just don't. So I think this is going to be really great because I can still get a lot of the successes I had last year with my project pan but it's sustainable for me as a content creator in that I make a video in June, I make a video in December. And, and, th and that's my project pan. It's pretty abridged compared to a lot of people who do monthly check-ins or bi-monthly check-ins, but I feel really good about it. So now I'm gonna share the products. All right, I have a few eyeshadow palettes that I want to just have pans in this year. I don't know if I specifically have super laid out goals for all of these, but these three eyeshadow palettes, I really want to see more pans in. And that's one because I just, there's something I love about seeing eyeshadow palettes that are just destroyed. Like there's a sick part of me that's like, like I would rather see an absolutely battered and like used, consumed, every eyeshadow has a pan, some are broken. Like I'd rather see that eyeshadow palette than like a fresh new clean one, personally. So one of the palettes, I don't have any pans on this yet. I'm pretty close, I think, in Starlight Sonata right here, but this is the Kleidos Escape Pod. I use this a lot for the shimmers or I use this a lot for colorful mattes. This is like my main colorful mattes palette. So, I mean, I think my two, I'll say three most used. I've used Starlight Sonata a lot. It's just the most beautiful special champagne overlay shade. I use Soiree a lot because it's a really, it's a pretty pigmented lavender and it's a really nice tone of lavender that I quite enjoy. And then I also have a pretty nice dip in Space Oasis, which is the sort of lavender blurple version of Starlight Sonata, just like a really beautiful shimmery glitter topper that elevates everything. It's great. So I would love to see pans in all three of those, maybe even more. I really want to use these colorful mattes more this year as just like bold, colorful looks because I just love the tones. I really love how everything performs in this palette. I wish Kaleidos still did stuff like this. Maybe they will this year. Maybe this will be the year they make their colorful comeback. This is a palette I want to see pretty significant pans in. Next is my Glossier Monochrome and Almond. I already have a pretty sizable pan in the matte. By the end of the year, I would love to see pans in like all shades in this palette have pans. This is something I reach for a lot when I don't know what I want to do or I want to add something neutral, warm as like a shimmer, as like a really soft shimmer or satin on my eyes. I've been doing that more because I have it front and center now in my vanity when I realized I wanted to put it in this project. And I'm really, I, I think I can do it. I think I already, I already have pretty significant dips in both of these shades, especially the satin. So I'm just trying to remind myself when I do a really basic look with 
the next palette I'm going to talk about, the Viseart Neutral Mattes, and I'm like, what soft shimmer do I want to use? A lot of times I reach for my Viseart shimmers, which are beautiful, but this is also a really good one to use because it really is a neutral rosy brown. It's not even rose gold, it's like a neutral rosy brown and it really goes with kind of everything. I want to be more cognizant and make sure I'm reaching for this because I just, I, I want to see a full of pants. And then lastly, like I just mentioned, my Viseart Neutral Mattes. This is fairly new to me, I got this right before my no-buy. And it's one of those products where I'm like, why did I wait so long to buy this? The formula is just the best of the best. I Viseart Matte Formula is by far the best matte formula I've personally tried. You can make them glam, you can make them every day. It's just so flexible and so wants to listen and react to what you are doing with an eye look. It's great. So I've been using these two shades a lot in this sort of like clean everyday bare lid look I've been doing. I I mean, I use pretty much all of these all the time except for like maybe these two peachier ones and this red. The rest of these, I mean, like I have, I can see pretty big dips in, or not big dips, but I can already see dips in like the gray and the black. Um, these two shades, I mean, I, I, I use 75% of this palette very, very regularly. I feel like the first thing that's gonna, I'm gonna pan is one of these two shades because I've just been using them so much, even just to set my eye primer, which is something I never used to do. But when I set my eye primer lightly with one or both of these, it just makes eyeshadow blend so much lovely on it and I think it's because the Viseart formula is just so kind and friendly. By the end of the year I want to see like maybe even half this palette have like small or large pans in it because this is just a workhorse palette for me and I, I don't say this about a lot of makeup because I think makeup's mainly for enjoyment but this is truly an, was an investment piece for me and it was not that expensive I think I got it for like on sale for like $27 but it prevents me from buying a lot of palettes and it's the base of most of my eye looks. So I just wanna see the usage because I know it's there. Next I wanna talk about a few complexion products. The Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I am more than halfway done with this, but I know this will go bad. The color has not changed on me yet, but I've had it for like over a year, honestly probably closer to two or maybe even over two years. And I know this is a product that will expire, the color will start to change, it will go off, and I just want to make sure I get the full use out of it. <sighs> How do I say this? I sometimes struggle to reach for primers that aren't like super glowy and are primers that are meant just to make your makeup last longer. It's just not something I care tremendously about, but I will say I have been using this and I think it was yesterday, was it yesterday? It was either yesterday or the day before I used this and at the end of the day, I was like, wow, my makeup looks really good. And at the end of the day, like usually it looks a little bit worse than this. And I realized it's because I use this. So I think it'll be great to get more use out of this. And especially as it heats up, although I think we're still ways away from, you know, spring really. But I, I, I just want to make sure I have this out. I want to make sure I'm thinking about it. And I use, I can use up primers pretty easily. As long as this is out and it kind of stays in my mind, I think I can probably use this up by June if I really wanted to, but at least by the end of this, the, the year, I really want to see this as an empty. Next is another primer. It's a multi-use shimmer goo. I am, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just so close. I'm so close. Somewhat unfortunately, but fortunately for the makeup goblet in me, I have a couple new shimmer goos in my life. One was purchased because I used up another primer. And if you haven't seen my budget video, I'll link it below, but I'm only doing one for one replacements with primers this year. So I have to use something up or declutter something to bring in a new primer, unless it's a gift. So I bought one primer because I used up a primer and then I also got the Lisa Eldridge liquid highlighter as a gift, which is definitely a shimmer goo. I don't have to take anything out of my collection to absorb that Lisa Eldridge one according to my rules, but I just want this to be gone so I can truly use the Lisa Eldridge today. I had this on as a primer today and then I have the Lisa Eldridge on top of my makeup. Lisa Eldridge is very, 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 very pretty. I may like it even more than this, but I've been getting a lot of use out of this. I used the crap out of it in the fall and at the end of last year. Again, because of a couple of new additions to my makeup collection, I haven't been. This has to be the priority because I don't want to just have this nearly used up thing in my collection. I want to use this up. 
So I'm hoping that will be soon. I don't think I'm going to take the stopper out when it comes time. I think one, I mean, it's already, Charlotte Tilbury's packaging is so messy already. I can't imagine the chaos would ensue if I took the stopper out. And then I have this powder from Kosas. This is the Kosas Cloud set. I have the shade Breezy. I kind of wish I had the shade Airy. This is nice in the summer when I don't want to brighten too much, but right now I'm like at my fairest. I just want to hit pan. I want to hit pan. I'm hoping maybe I'll hit pan by June. I have a very large dip. I'll hit pan by June. And then by the end of the year, I can completely use this up. That's what I'm hoping. There's so much, it just feels like there's so much product in here. I don't really ever need a lot. And I only use like true setting powder at this point under my eyes and on my nose. I would love to try other setting powders that I think I would enjoy more than this. This one's fine. Kosas products are always just like, yeah, that's good, but not my favorite. And this powder is kind of no exception. And then last sort of complexion product, which also has cheek products in it. So it's a good transition. We saw New York Cream Palette. I... I really like Salt New York as a brand. I appreciate what they do. They're actually redoing their packaging, which I think is really smart. I, I don't know if I love the choices they've made, but I do appreciate that they are trying. I have Salt New York's packaging and I just prefer to keep these in like a cheap magnetic palette that I think Tom sent me <laughs> because they just fit better and it's a whole thing. Anyway, I don't reach for these as much as I used to. I used to, and I've used up several Salt New York pans, like at least three or four, I think, in the past. I think a couple were part of a pro my project last year. I think the bronzer was, and I used that up pretty quickly. You actually don't even get that much product in these, which is good because they're easy to use up, bad because, you know, especially with the Sneaky Bomb, you kind of maybe want more than they're giving. I just have other things in my collection that I kind of like better than all of these. I love Coco, and I really, really want to use up Coco all the way. I had to repress it because it was just on, it was just making a very thin border and it was impossible to pick up. So I really want to use up Coco. I would love to use up this contour shade. I've made really obviously significant prod progress in it. I have a really large pan. These products are just sheer. And I've just noticed now that I've used more products that they really do have a tendency to pick up foundation. And I'm, I think I'm wearing a little bit more coverage these days, or I'm a little bit more sensitive about it. So I don't know. These products just don't always look the best when I use them with my makeup application now. I kind of prefer my phytosurgeons blushes, or I prefer just using like my powder products, things like that, or maybe even like a stiffer cream formula than these. These are very balmy and like this contour, they're so lightly pigmented that sometimes I put them on and I'm like, okay, that sort of did something, but not really. <laughs> I really at least want to use up these two completely. And then it might just be time to declutter all of the rest of these. These two are fairly new. These, this is like their new sort of hybrid blush, highlighter, bronzer formula. So I'll probably keep those around. And I would also, I, I like bought these and I was really, really excited about them. I still barely use them. They're really more summer products for me though. So I'm hoping this summer I'll start reaching for them more. But I'm really just trying not to forget about this. And then lastly, I have a lot of cheek products <laughs> besides those all New York ones. Let's start with bronzer and contour. I have my Gucci bronzer. I love her. I'm wearing her today. I've really been enjoying doing really light contour, really light blush and then doing a wet look highlighter over top and then kind of setting everything in sort of the hybrid area between where you would typically bronze and blush with my Gucci bronzer. It's so rosy, it's so blurring, it just makes everything. It's just like, like today, things weren't quite hitting. And then as soon as I put this on, things started to really come together. It's the perfect finishing step. I'm having sort of a renaissance with me realizing I think I have more pink in my skin, especially in my fair skin than I realized before and not wanting to look orange or overly warm. And this is just such a gift. I, it's a very expensive product, but I have definitely gotten the use out of what it does for my makeup application and what it does for my looks. I just, Again, I want to see pan. I'm very, very close. I, I have, the, the imprint is completely gone in this one area that I always dip. And I think it's only a matter of time. 
It could happen tomorrow, it could happen in four months. This is the M Cosmetics stick in Terra. It may have dog hair on it <laughs> because I dropped it earlier and um, I tried to get all the hair off of it. But I have so little of this left. It's almost flushed to the top of the packaging. I What I usually do with this is I grab a very small amount on a brush and then I put it on. It's what I've been using for contour. It's a little bit warm for contour, but especially with my fair skin, when I have more of a tan, it really just looks like a contour. But right now it kind of looks more like brontour. But when used lightly, it really does shape the face really well. I like-ish the formula. I'm just, it, I've had it for so long, so I think I, I'm just re ready for it to be done. I don't support M Cosmetics anymore. I don't buy from them. And I just like want it to be out and I really want to buy and try a new contour. I think I have my eye on Ritual Defeat Intuition, but I must finish this first. <laughs> I must finish this. So I think I, I'm interested to see how long it's, once I finally get it flush to the lid or the top of the packaging, I'll probably continue to use it because I know there's probably going to be more product under but if it becomes too difficult to use, I will, and like it gets below the top of the packaging, I may just consider decluttering it and saying, I mean, or not decluttering it, I'll consider it finished because I have, like, let me <laughs> twist it down. Like, I, I have used the vast majority of it and if it becomes like a real pain to use, I may do that, but I at least wanted to get a, like I at least want to get it flushed to the top of the packaging first. But I'm very close to this. I just need to keep on keeping on. I've been contouring every day. Like I said, I really love that soft contour, soft blush. Little bit of Gucci bronzer on top. Look, it just looks very chic. I've been really enjoying it. It doesn't look too overpowering. Next, I have a couple of blushes. A couple of my absolutely favorite blushes. Phytosurgeons Condensate. I have used the crap out of this. Like when you get it, I'm pretty sure it's close to the top, if not at the top. And mine is like, completely flattened and I have changed my application of this. I used to just dip a brush in, but now what I do is I dip a finger in, put a dot or two on, and then I blend it out with a pretty small brush because it just gives me a better targeted application. I sometimes, and sometimes I really like having like an overblown blush look, but I realized recently I kind of haven't enjoyed how that looks because it just really overtakes my face. This sort of emphasizes my cheekbones a little bit more and just makes everything look a little bit cleaner when I do more localized blush placement. I think I've been using a little bit less of this than usual, but I'm very, like, I just want to see the bottom of the pan. I don't necessarily want to use this up by the end of the year, but I think I could definitely get to, like, hit pan in this. Hopefully by June. I think that'd be cool. This is more of a fall-winter blush shade, too. I, you know, who knows what I'll the vibe will be. And you know, I use this year round because it is the perfect neutral lavender blush. But I think th this is very much like we're in its season right now. So I just want to like do my best to try to hit pan on this by the end of winter or at least June. By June, I guess I should say. Pat McGrath Flirtatious makes its triumphant comeback. I am, I like I said, I'm a lot closer to pan than I was last year. And I use this a lot. I will say when I got the Hourglass palette, I put it down for a bit because that has blushes like powder blushes that are really great at layering over top. I almost never just wear a powder blush. I usually have Phytosurgeon's Condensate or a Phytosurgeon's blush or something on and then I layer a powder over top. But this is the perfect layering powder if I just want a little bit more pink on my cheeks. It plays well with pretty much everything. It blurs really beautifully. The color is phenomenal. And, and I have flattened, flattened the imprint where I usually put my blush brush in. It's a very hard pressed product. And I mean, I can, like when I look from this angle right now, I really do see a decent dent and I maybe even see an outline of a pan. But this is one, again, like the Gucci bronzer. And I guess like this is how I always think with powder products. I'm like, I could hit pan in that tomorrow or it could be pan in four months, but I'm really hoping by June I hit pan in this and I can maybe even roll it out and put something else in because I just want to see pan. I just want to see pan in this. I don't really want to use it up because it is such a staple in my collection now, but 
I finally want to hit pan in this. I want to hit pan in a powder blush so bad. <laughs> and that's definitely the most likely candidate for that. And then finally, my Fenty Beauty Highlighter in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This is a duo. One's a much more natural shade and the other is a much more blingy shade. I have obviously significant pan on one side, the more natural side, and I have a really big dip in the more intense side, if you can see that. It's it's pretty almost to the bottom of the pan. I think ideally, I really want to try more powder highlighters this year. I think it's part of my one plus one or one for one plus one category where I can bring in a new powder highlighter if I want to. I kind of want to hit significant pans in both of these pans before I buy any new powder highlighters. Because I, I really love this product. I think it's beautiful. I like that it's a duo and you can kind of customize how intense you want your highlighter to be. But what I will say is that I do, like I don't think this is the best on the market. Like I really want to try the Rare Beauty one. I kind of want to try the Pat McGrath one. I really want to try that Makeup Forever one. <laughs> but I know how hard it is to get, and I use this a lot and you know, that's pretty significant pan. I used to fluff it in her corner, all of that good stuff. I know how hard it is to hit pan and use up powder highlighters, so that's why I'm, it's not in just like the no restrictions category for me, even though I really love powder highlighter. But I just want to make sure I get all the use I want to out of this before I bring anything else in, I want to say. And that's the video. I hope you enjoyed some meta analysis <laughs> of my project pan experience and just my experience with usage products one last mess up. My experience with usage projects in the beauty space thus far. I would love to hear if you have any similar experiences or different experiences below. I'm excited about this project pan. I'm excited that I'm letting myself do it in a fashion that I'm pretty confident I can succeed at. I'm excited to come back in June and show y'all the process, the pro progress. <laughs> I need to drink more coffee. The progress I have in these products for the project and the products and the process. No, the progress, not the process. I feel like I'm in a Sondheim musical now. It is a tra travesty that Sondheim never got to write a musical about Project Panning. I don't really know what that would have looked like. Anyway, rest in peace, Stephen Sondheim. Uh, thanks y'all for being <laughs> Thank y'all for being here so much. Reminder to give this video a like if you haven't yet. It helps me a lot in the wild, wild west of the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you want to see future uploads, if you want to check back in June for how I'm doing with this project. And I'm just so thankful that y'all are here. Bye y'all.